Well, hello and welcome to another show, another episode of Fresh Natural Live. I hope your weekend was great and I hope your Monday uh, has been uh, equally great. Um, I'm here in Houston and we've had a lot of rain. We got this, uh, I think it's a tropical storm moving in on the coast. And so uh, I was out putting my plants in the ground and that type of thing. And so I had a, a Monday mixed with clinical administrative work and gardening work. And so here we are this evening. So Again, I hope all of you've done well. Uh, those of you who are on, come on into the chat room, say hello. Uh, we have a special, special show uh, for you tonight. Uh, Father time is uh, something that uh, we all have to deal with. And uh, the guest tonight is gonna give us some secrets as to how we cheat Father time to a certain extent, uh, in a sense that we want to learn how to live a vibrant, uh, energetic life as we uh, become chronologically more older or wiser, if you will. Uh, oftentimes we think of getting old as, as becoming ill and many people get into their 60s, and 70s, and 80s, and then uh, they say, oh, well, you know, um, I'm 60 years old. Some people, I'm 40 years old and my back hurts, my knee hurts, and you know, I can't get out and exercise like I used to. Some people in their 30s, they feel terrible. And uh, our guest tonight is going to try to uh, help us reverse that trend. Um, we're going to have her reveal her age. I'm not going to reveal the age of uh, a lady and let her reveal her age, but she's going to give us some secrets as to how we can um, cheat for the time. So uh, I look forward to that. Chef Babette, many of you probably know her. She is a super chef, a raw vegan chef, a world class. Uh, she's world renowned. She is uh, also a TV and social media personality, a model, an athlete. Uh, and of course, she runs Stuff I Eat. So we're going to hear about her life and her journey. And uh, hopefully we'll get some insights on uh, her magic and her secrets in terms of how we cheat father time. So uh, what I want to do is I'm going to bring in our panel. Uh, some of our panels will be coming in late. Uh, but we have Dr. Floyd Atkins, who's uh, here. He's our resident podiatrist who does patient counseling, and um, he's going to be on the panel this evening. Dr. Celeste Palmer, our resident pediatrician, uh, will be uh, on next. Uh, she's coming in a little bit late. She's saving lives right now, but she'll be in uh, the studio uh, shortly. We'll bring her in once she uh, comes in. But uh, without further ado, our uh, special guest is Chef Babette. Oh, there she is, uh, Dr. Palmer. Hello. Uh, welcome to the show, Dr. Palmer. She's made it in from the clinic. Uh, as I was about to say, uh, Chef Babette uh, is an extremely fit and youthful um, vegan, raw vegan chef. And she's been uh, working in this capacity for over two decades. She is a firm believer that we should all eat live food and live consciously. She is uh, committed to an active health uh, advocate for co-founding the Love Your Age Project, which promotes successful aging throughout all age groups. The Love Your Age Project is intended to expose health and wellness to individuals who may not otherwise be acquainted with healthier lifestyles due to environmental and economic barriers or simple lack of knowledge. Chef Babette's personal journey to health began after years of suffering from digestive issues, asthma, skin disorders. Uh, a pivotal point in her transformation came after reading the book Fit for Life by Harvey and Marilyn Diamond. She made a conscious decision to eat for the sake of nutrition, which began her journey towards self-healing. She passionately studied the body food connection and began experimenting with vegan and raw food recipes. She soon became a chemist in the kitchen and spent years perfecting recipes, which allowed her to eat what she loved without the guilt of associated diseases and ailments. You know, words cannot fully describe um, uh, Chef Babette. So what I'm going to do before I bring her on, I'm going to give you a little bit of a video clip, a sampling of who uh, this wonderful person is in case you haven't met her or haven't uh, seen her. So let's stay tuned before I bring Chef Babette on stage live. Let's take a look at a little bit of a video on her. Hey everybody, it's Chef Babette. I'm having a blast. You know what I do? I do best desserts. And I'm inviting you to come over on any day and I will be very happy 
to teach you how to make this delectable. And we call this Chef Bobette's Blackberry Blueberry Cobbler. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna first saute, I'm using tempeh today. Okay. All right, a little bell pepper. Can we start, Chef? Yeah. Green on y'all, please okay. dig in. Okay. And so you have, but you don't eat anything unless you promise you're gonna be like, mm. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. They'll like it, they'll so, like it. Okay, so, the, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna dump our tempeh yeah, in here. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just and a little I, bit of oil. And I, oil? I'm not using oil, actually. Okay. And because if we get it hot enough, we oh can just God, take right. the, um, oh, isn't it? Yeah. See, yeah. say it louder, louder, louder. Mm. They're saying wow. it's delicious. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, so anyway. whoa, this yeah. is yeah. incredible. Isn't it? It's like cheesy. All right, so. Then we're gonna, oh, this is Brad's liquid amino, so I'm using this instead of a Salt. Okay. So, um, can we just mention something? Now, I hope you're okay with this. I'm okay with it. How how young are you? <gasps> I'm 66. No, no way. way. Please step back, everybody. No way. What? 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 Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. How about all of you come along with me and hang out with Chef B today? We're gonna do a real great workout in the park. Working out is about breathing, it's about pushing, it's about taking yourself to your max. Life is not complete unless you move. Most days, however, I am at Stuff I Eat banging it away at least until opening and then the rest of the day is mine i'm gonna go to my favorite health food store and we're gonna pick up some items because i've got a group of friends that are gonna come around today and we're gonna sit back chat enjoy ourselves and eat some of my delectable delights i gotta get this spiralizer bought one last night um left it and I need one. And I'm and I'm trying to be a little frugal, but at the same time, I want to make sure that this ain't going to jack me out of my money. So you know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to just go with the $20 spiralizer. I know this one will work. $19.99. This is what I'm getting today for our raw spaghetti. I got my team here, all my ladies, and we're getting ready to prepare <laughs> spaghetti sauce for y'all. So what we're gonna do is we're actually making one sauce, but it's so darn versatile. You can actually eat it raw or live, or we can heat it as we have some heating over there. And so you can either have pasta, you can have spiralized zucchini. It's just a super versatile sauce. Right now, we're gonna get ready uh, to dive in and make all of you viewing this very, very jealous. Yeah. Let's eat, y'all. And the beauty to all of this is that at my age, at 66 years old, outside of the restaurant, I can still have such a fantastic time and I have the energy to enjoy myself. So today I just, it's Saturday, I gathered with friends and it was absolutely wonderful. Have a great day, bye. You gotta Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> All right, that, well I think that uh, spells it out there. So without, Further ado, we want to bring on Chef Babat. Where are you? Wow, Doc. <laughs> you did, I can't believe you showed that last clip there. That was kind of scary well, a little bit. <laughs> hey, that's a special part. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, let me start off with the obvious question. How young are you? Well, I'm 69. I can't believe that clip was from so many years ago. Yeah, I'll be 70 in a couple of months. Wow, time flies. Yeah. Time flies. Well, it as does. I always say, you don't look a day over 25. Well, so. you better say that, Doc, if you want to stay friends. <laughs> <laughs> How are you all doing? We, yeah. you, you, met our, you met our panel, Dr. Floyd Atkins, Dr. Celeste Palmer. I think you met, met our panelists over the years. I think through events, you've been here to Houston a few times to our different right. events. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, it's uh, this is the group that tends to work around. So what I want to do today is have you give us uh, your personal insight 
into your journey. You know, we see a lot of people and, you know, I try to convey this to my patients. And one of these days I may have to do a special little video interaction with you to stress this with my patients because I have a lot of patients who come in and, 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 and Dr. Atkins probably can confess to their health center. Uh, the Dr. Palmer's patients are much younger. She's a pediatrician, but she could probably share the same thing with her. <laughs> Some of her patients are probably not as, as fit as you are. But um, we, we have this idea as we get older, we uh, should become more broken down. And there, and, and, and it's, it starts in people's mindset. I mean, I have an older brother. I mean, he's, you know, he, he you know, doesn't take care of himself. And, and so as we get older, we, we sort of give in to being sickly and less fit and so on. And so as, as we go through your journey and, you know, how you've gotten to where you are, I want you to sort of help us, help our audience to some extent break through that whole mindset. So, so give us the chef the bet before now, before you learn about this lifestyle, tell us where you started, where, you know, tell us about your background, where'd you come up, where'd you, you know, et cetera. Okay. Um, thank you so much, Doc, for having me on. This is so important because so many of us have such a lousy quality of life as we, as we get older. Um, I kind of grew up like everybody else, eating the standard American diet. Um, we ate everything, absolutely everything. Um, I had quite a bit of difficulty as a child because uh, I suffered with asthma and eczema. Um, I had terrible, terrible earaches all the time, all the time. I could, I spent so much time out of school to the point that I can remember mucus running out of the ear. Oops, you got gone mute. Am I? Can you hear me? I can hear you now, yeah. You can hear me? Okay. My mother would take a cloth and she'd put table salt in it and put it in a cast iron skillet and get it warm enough for me to handle it. Put it on my ear and you could just see the mu mucus running out of my ear. I was, wow. I was really sickly as a kid. <laughs> And then as um, I got older, it became more and more difficult for me to digest food. Um, I just had an extreme problem with um, com combining food incorrectly did not work out for me and my system. And once I learned that, I was able to overcome that. Um, but for the most of my younger adult life, um, I was pretty miserable. Um, I can remember being so constipated. I just couldn't use the bathroom for days and days and days. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, it was it was really, really, really bad. Excuse me, I got a scarf hanging out. But um, I finally met my current husband. Fast forward, met my current husband. And when I met him, he was not practicing a vegan lifestyle, but he was knowledgeable. Um, a lot more knowledgeable than myself. I can remember a friend trying to sell me herbs and I was like, would you please leave me alone? I don't want no herbs. But I, I just, I was just ignorant, you know? And so he suggested that I read the two books that you, um, you stated, uh, Fit for Life by Harvey and Marilyn Dim Diamond, both volumes, and The Mucusless Diet Healing System by Professor Arnold Eric. Once I read those books um, and I began to really get serious about the suggestions in the book, my world changed. It really and truly did. I pretty much transitioned overnight. I, I, I was a, a believer quick. The asthma went away, eczema went away, my skin cleared up. No more of the acid reflux. No, all of those things went away with just plant-based eating and beginning to move. I started working out. Um, my husband would run the hills to Griffith. The first time he took me to Griffith Park, he ran that entire hill backwards. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, if he can do, I can barely walk this hill, you guys. Now, now, I met him when I was 40. Well, I was turning 40. I met him in the spring. I was turning 40 in December. And um, 
that's when I started working out and changed the entire diet. And he also changed his diet. And our lives just changed. And we, we started working over at um, Agape Spiritual Center. We decided why not share some of the food that we eat with others. It's delicious food because we were making anything we wanted, tacos, burritos, all kinds of stuff. And, and well, we thought people would love this stuff. So a couple of questions. So you, I mean, when you made this change, number one, you started noticing, how long did it take you to feel better? That's number one. A week? I started week? feeling better immediately. Uh, wow. Once I learned about See, the connection with the food combining, along with getting rid of all of the animal products, was a huge plus for me. Mm -hmm. um, I was mixing up all kinds of stuff. I mean, you know, and then when I learned, come on, you eat your melons alone, eat them on an empty stomach, fruit should be eaten on an empty stomach. I started learning all this stuff, and all of the, everything that I was going through stopped. And mm -hmm. so, and then with the movement, I started moving. I'm running now. Now I'm running. I'm 40 mm -hmm. years old and I'm just starting to run. And so I started noticing a difference. And, oh, you know what? If I had not doc noticed it uh, right away, I might not have stayed on it. You know what I mean? But it was it was um, very very clear that this change, this transition, was working, and and we stayed with it. And that's that was back in 1990. So then, so you talk about the food you you and your your now husband then went and started working at Agape. Were were either of you chefs or culinary skilled people prior to this? No, not at all. And especially myself, people would always be like, "She's cooking, really." and selling it to people. <laughs> so, so no, I was not the cook. He had a better handle of the kitchen than myself, but he taught me a lot. And so um, once we, well, see the catering started over at, uh, actually I went to Japan. I thought I was gonna be a singer. Uh, he was into music as well. Went to Japan. All I was doing in Japan was working out and shopping for and making recipes and feeding the rest of the group. And, and they were practicing music. So I figured to myself, you know what? I'm going to meditate. I started meditating. And I mean, I put time in. And when I got back home, I knew that I was going to start a catering company. And that is exactly what we did. At first, I was over at uh, Agape Spirit. Uh, no, I was over at City of Angels with Reverend O.C. Smith. And I had about 30 customers. People seem to enjoy the food. Then I moved over to Agape Spiritual Center with Reverend Michael Beckwith. And at, at a point, we built ourselves a 15-foot hot, we call it a hot dog cart, because we had griddle, refrigeration, everything on this wow. car. And we wound up, we stayed there on that parking lot for six years. We had block long lines. Wow. Seriously. And then we knew, man, people are liking this food. And um, we were on our way to Jamaica because I was working as a flight attendant and um, we would always go to Jamaica for a few days off. And we were walking down the street on Market Street in Inglewood and we saw the doors to Stuff I Eat open. Mm. And we went in, met the owner. And when we came back from Jamaica, he um, wanted to talk to us. And he pretty much just let us have the building first and last month. Can we handle it? We didn't. We weren't thinking that we were going to get a restaurant, and he uh, let us have the building. It took us four years to open it. To the point wow. that people were saying, "Do you really have a restaurant?" <clears throat> but we were determined, and um, we opened the doors in two thousand and eight in July. Wow! We didn't now, even what? have trash. We didn't have trash cans, Doc. We, they, oh my God! Why did it take four years? Was it just getting the furniture or what? Just, just trying to fix the insides. It I had see. been closed down for years. So we gotcha. had to come in there and pretty much gut it and do everything. Was it a and restaurant then, before? Huh? Was it a restaurant before? It it had been a restaurant, yes. Uh, okay. So it, it was, you know, but we, we took all of the ceiling out and all that kind of stuff. We just had to redo the whole thing. But uh, in July, we opened our doors and um, the people started coming. 
and we've not closed them since, not even during COVID. Wow. We've the, yeah, we've reduced the hours a little bit to make it work, but um, we're still open and people are still coming. This has been an incredible journey. And the, the fact that I can share this with whoever will come and partake just really makes me happy because I know what this food, this lifestyle has done for me. And um, if I could just get inside everybody's head. No, that's great. Because it's incredible. I mean, you're a very energetic person. I mean, you're, I mean, you're funny, you're, you're energetic, you're, I mean, you're very entertaining, uh, you're spontaneous. Was, was this your same personality prior to living this lifestyle? I mean, were you always, you know, a vibrant, energetic, fun I, to be with? You know, um, sort of, uh, but I wasn't working out. Um, and um, I didn't have the confidence that I gained. Gotcha. You know what I mean? I, yeah. um, my skin was a wreck, um, I, and I didn't feel good a lot. So I, I was kind. Of, I, re, I would recluse a lot. I, I'd stay home, stay to myself a lot. I wasn't really super outgoing. Uh, but once I started feeling better and started working out, and the blood was moving, I started feeling good. And I'm thinking, I'm getting older, but better. So wow! Yeah, yeah. amazing. I'm out. So, Chef Abed, take us. So, you're in the restaurant in 2008. You're you're moving. You're exercising. Now, the person we sit down, you are, you know, a social media personality, TV personality. Um, I mean, I mean, you do modeling. If I, I mean, you got a lot of images. We'll show some of that a little later. Uh, help us out. How did you make that transformation? What, Chef Abed, we see today? I mean, well. Facebook, all that. When did that start to happen for you? You know, um, I started my Facebook page hmm, quite some time ago. I don't, and I remember my daughter saying, well, "Mom, if you want a Facebook page, you're gonna have to put the photos on there. You're gonna have to start taking pictures, and you're gonna have to do this yourself. I can't do this for you." And so um, <laughs> that's what I did. I just started playing around. And then I had someone come into the restaurant who thought, you should have a TV program. And as, as he was a, a, a professional commercial photographer. So whatever he did for me, he made me look like I was already on TV a star. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, oh, this sounds like fun. I could get into this. It'll, it'll build the business. And um, eventually, Mercy for Animals uh, got on to us. BuzzFeed got on to us. And once all of that started rolling, I mean, BuzzFeed, we had over 10,000 views. Oh, no, 10 million views, excuse me. Mercy for Animals, same thing. So once you get that kind of media attention, it's going all over the planet. Mm. So then we noticed that people were coming into the restaurant from Australia, from Europe, from from everywhere. And they knew they knew once they got off the plane, since we're only about 15, 20 minutes from the airport, their first stop was stuff I eat. And so um, all of a sudden, you know, when you start getting that kind of media, uh, that online attention, People are coming after you then. And so that's pretty much how, every, and that's how Chef AJ found me. Ah, Remember online. that's when I first met you when we went to the event? That's right, out, that's yeah. right. Yep, I remember that, yeah. And then, then you came to Houston and, and right. then it began the whole connection. Yeah, I was brand new. I was brand new with all this. I, you know, I, I, I so appreciate you taking a chance. You, you, <laughs> hey. Stage. Now you, when I saw you on stage, yeah, I knew you were a natural, so it wasn't a chance at all. I want to say hello to everybody who's in the chat. Uh, Deborah, hello, Deborah, Shonda, Karen, uh, Jackie McCray, our usuals, hello, Yolanda, Gwendolyn, hello, uh, Mina, Crystal, Amina, Martika, Hitter, hello, Martika, how are you doing? Uh, Martika's here, Faye Parker, Yolanda Petaway, 
So we got a good group of people. I'm sure some of your folks are on, and I'm, if I see their names come up, and I want to uh, ask everybody in the uh, in the uh, chat room or in on in uh, who in the audience to just give us a thumbs up and a round of applause for Chef Babette. Chef Babette, um, what I want to do is uh, I'm going to look at some of the videos, uh, uh, photos that you have that uh, I'm going to share with the audience, and as I throw these up, uh, just give some comments. But also okay. want you to reflect on some advice. I'm asking you a question to talk to some of my patients uh, because I'm going to have some of my patients look at the show and uh, I want them to hear from you directly. And some of the things I'm asking you to uh, uh, discuss with them is let's say someone's older, they may be 70, 80, and they're, you know, you know, worn out in a wheelchair, maybe can barely walk, whatever. Uh, I want you to talk to that person uh, at some point. Uh, just just uh, reflect on that. But while we do that, I want to sort of share uh, some images to let our audience know um, some of the things we're doing here. So these are some uh, photos of you. Wow. Uh, and um, uh, they, we, they're online. So this is, uh, I didn't, you know, get any secrets or anything but i mean these are just amazing photos of um you in terms of different settings uh athletic uh fit energetic and so on uh and here's someone in her 60s and 70s and so i just want us all to understand that aging does not equate to breaking down aging is uh something where we can uh do it gracefully and be energetic now here's some of the, uh, I'll just sort of bring these up individually. And if you want to comment on any of them, you feel free to. You know, um, wow, you <laughs> that's incredible. I, I uh, realized that when I was building the, uh, the, the page that I needed uh, photographs. So I had a real good friend who was a photographer and some of these images he took uh, but there was more than one photographer on these. And um, the picture, the lower picture uh, down here uh, with me with the black on. Uh, huh? Yeah. Um, I am very confused. I, I'm very confused as where I took that. I, I, I think I was doing a magazine article and a photographer took that particular picture of me. Um, and the and the one with me holding the little plate. Oh Lord, I got so tired of that little picture and that little that little hump of cake on that little plate. But they still they still show that little picture. But well, I this was what y'all insisted we use on one of the times you came down and spoke. I remember. Yeah, this. I, I, you know what? I must have been about um, in my late fifties. Uh, no. Took, yeah, in my late fifties or early 60s i think i was in my late 50s when i took this photo and the one up really? there with the white blouse on with the longer hair okay I think I was, wow. it was around the same time when i took those photos the rest of them i was already in my 60s for sure wow wow um, but yeah you know i never really considered myself very photogenic um at all um because of some of the issues that that i suffered with i i wouldn't even take pictures and then um once I cleaned myself up, I started looking different to myself. And then I felt more confident um, taking these photos. And um, was just just the one thing that that is extremely important to anybody is that it's not it, it's not just about the food. It's mighty body, mind and spirit. It's yep. all of it together. You can't just get it right by changing one thing. Yep. Um, we we okay. have some illness on our planet, and the illness is not just physical. We got a lot of mental illness going on right now. And and people um, need to understand that we need to nourish the whole, all of it. All of it needs to be nourished. And I'm going huh? to have you get into that during our advice. Give us a few comments on these foods. We got some oh. questions coming in. Um, I, so what is this one up here in the upper right? You know, I got into making these vegan desserts because I found out how um, wonderful the cashew nut is, the raw cashew nut. Yeah. And once I learned that you can soak them 
and make anything you practically want. I wrote a book called Cash In on Cashews. Um, oh, wow. 50 plus, let me get this. And I'll bring these pictures up while she brings a book up. 50 plus desserts uh, made from the cashew nut. And, and I'm telling you, that's one of them. And I don't even, right now, it looks like it might be a peanut butter chocolate okay uh, cake and let's see the the picture right underneath that is our nut burger we make our own patties uh oh, wow uh, in-house so no we don't care for buying you know it's the thing with buying packaged food is that on the back of the package you got to read the ingredients and a lot of times it's two or three paragraphs of ingredients i don't care if it is vegan um but if it's got a bunch of stuff in it that i can't pronounce I'm not too crazy about ingesting it. Um, and the, the, the picture next to that, uh, that looks like one of our casseroles. This is a, this is a yep. creative salad, the big picture to the yep. far left. That's okay. our creative salad. That's what you get in our, our full creative salad. Oh, wow. um, the lower picture, that's our soul food platter. Okay. So, I mean, we, you know, we got some everything going. And so one thing, uh, back, this huh? This is great. One thing I remember is that, um, and and Celeste often comments, and she may want to chime in. You know, she has a pediatric population, and getting them to eat healthy uh, can be a challenge. And and I, you, I, I've been to your restaurant a number of times. You probably remember I brought my kid, right, who right, uh, right, I'm right. struggling to get into the lifestyle. <laughs> but <clears throat> what I will say is that I took. I was I was in LA. This was in 2016. I had my four kids plus uh, their cousins. I had five teenagers. I remember that. And we went by the restaurant and we sat and ate, and they all loved the food. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, it's that kind of food, you know. You know, it yeah. really. What we did was we 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 all we believed in um, reaching people right where they were. It's like don't, you know. I can remember when I first started eating out. If I ate out vegan food out uh, back in the day, it was a little. It was bland and dull and, and you know, and, and, and I can definitely speak for black and brown people. If, if the food ain't got no snap, we struggling to eat it. <laughs> that's, just, that's who we are. It has to have something going on to it, you know, because it's not that we don't desire to do better. It's just that with, with what we, with what we don't have because of, um, where we live food is comforting to us if we, we if we don't get nothing else we can go home and make a good meal and be okay with that yeah. um so we knew that people if we wanted people and most of my customers are not vegan or vegetarian they're not you know and chef Babette, i've been out to your restaurant also the last time i was in california uh -huh. and um it's aesthetically it's pleasing and i think that that attracts children and non-vegan and non-vegetarian people too because it looks so good it's a, a rainbow that's true that's true that's true and that and we prided ourselves on making sure the plates were pretty you know what i'm saying at least and and putting some life on the plate i at too many times we don't ingest anything but death there's i mean the the, the whole plate of food has been subjected to heat and and we're not getting anything from it and a lot of times i act like somebody's mama when they come in when they used to come in and sit down and dine if you didn't eat that salad i'd go get you to go <laughs> oh my goodness. Look, the only live food on your plate was the salad so you know we, we have to learn that but i don't girl how do you do it with the with the with the youngsters they are challenging they are very challenging it, it is it is very challenging and i was just saying last week we have to kind of take a new look at it and and get the children involved in the process because just putting the food on their plate is not going to do it. it anymore that's the um, lick. That yeah is the lick. you gotta yeah. you have to take them what my girlfriend does is she comes up each one of them comes up with a recipe they can find mm -hmm. it online whatever right they all go shopping and they have to come home and prep it. And it's wow. really weird. No matter how horrible it is, they'll eat it they'll then. Eat what they pick. Exactly. They pick. That's, you have to make it a, a fun, a project. I mean, and then you're teaching them also exactly. to cook and how things taste and 
you know, so it's it's a learning process and also it's making it fun and it keeps them involved and then they exactly. understand food and the whole process because just putting something on the table is not gonna work. No. You know, this is uh this is interesting, y'all saying this because uh Celeste, you probably remember last week we were talking and then the whole issue of gardening came up and I started saying to myself or thinking to myself, hey, we need to be intentional about telling people to garden. And and I think what you're saying now, we probably need to be intentional. You're talking about having the kids do it. I'm, I probably need to do that with my patients. So we probably have to have something where we get patients go out and, and create recipes and come back on follow-up office visits and, and, and do it as an assignment that gets them engaged and uh, right. helps them develop yeah. this. We have a question from the audience, somebody uh, about your workouts. Uh, Karen Evans, uh, she assumed you lift heavy weights. How long has you been lifting and did you create your own program? Not a late weight lifter. No, I um, never really got into weightlifting. I have done a little bit of weights when I work out at the gym with a trainer. Um, but more than anything, mine is core strength. Um, I work really, really hard and consistent on my core. I just, I don't want to get 80 years old, fall down and need a life alert. I just, I just want to be strong enough. Always to pull myself up. If I want, if I want to go to Griffith Park and walk that hill at 85 years old, I know that I should be able to do that. I know that because the human body, the human body is capable. If we give it the right nutrition, if we give it the right stuff, we can go a while. We can go a while. So that's what I'm testing. I'm trying to see. Look, so I. Alexi wants to know about potatoes, yams, sweet potatoes. Uh, do you eat those raw or how do you prepare those? Actually, what I'll take to do, do this with a yam. Honey, take that yam with some soaked cashew nuts and little agave nectar and some coconut oil, a little sea salt and some, uh, what you call that stuff, uh, nutmeg and blend those raw potatoes up in the blender with all that stuff that I said. Watch how it tastes. Wow. It's wow. so good. It's so good. And you can even throw some peanut butter in that. Okay, so raw, raw yam. Raw yams. We can now that is one way that I eat them. Otherwise, otherwise, I still do consume cooked food. I'm not a hundred percent raw, but I don't eat a lot. I start my day with a 32 ounce jar of green juice, and I'm I'm making it green. And so once, once for me, once the nutrients are there, the message to the brain is I'm not hungry. So I'm not the girl that's sitting down to huge plates of food. Nope. I will make a handful of nuts, raw nuts, a meal. I can, I can, you know what I'm saying? I don't eat like that. That's just not, that's not my groove. I'm not sitting down overindulging and, laid back and ready to pass out no mm -mm, i get my nutrients when i need my nutrients because that to me is the most important thing for me to do is make sure that this food is working for me so shepherd that so we have some of our patients out there and fortunately unfortunately some people uh <clears throat> have um didn't have the blessing of starting at 40 uh, even though 40 is you know midway there but you know, some people in their 70s already haven't made the change, etc. cetera. Uh, give them some insight. What would you say to somebody, you know, 70, 80, um, and how would you advise them to get started? What, what would be some of your words of advice and encouragement for that patient? You, that individual? you know, I have a, I have a friend that, uh, that she allows me to prep food for her periodically and, um, the, the sometimes it's challenging because you know we we get stuck we get stuck and um but but she's a, a good sport and and i was taking her the green drinks um but with the green drinks like i i go hard on ginger and so for her you know i always had to make the adjustment because you know it's a it's a shock to the palate i mean you're not used to it but i know she needed it I knew that she needed it. So what we wound up doing was she wanted me to replace the drinks 
with smoothies. So I make her different uh, smoothies and that's working for her right now. But I keep her strictly vegan and she's happy about that. But uh, I'm, I'm not going to say that, uh, like, because I remember with my mom, my mom made her transition when she was 93. And I can remember when I was feeding her after her after the stroke, she did pretty well as long as I was feeding her. But she did tell me, um, I don't want you to think now that I'm not going to ever have another piece of chicken. She, you know, she was just like, I'm doing this because I had this stroke. But And so once she was able to get to her girlfriend's house, when I opened the restaurant, they started feeding her. And shortly after that, she wound up making her transition. And I know it's because she was eating the wrong way. She was just eating. The, I couldn't get to her. I needed somebody to care for her 24 hours a day. And, and I, I, we lost the fight. But to, to my my um my folks in in my age group, start slow. And and if if there's any information that you can share with a person that age to kind of you know work on the whole common sense thing, and then just start them slow because inch by inch, you know, even though a person's seventy, I'm seventy. But if I was starting something new today, I'm young enough to get it done. I'm young enough at seventy to get it done. All I need to do is have the information and the desire to feel better and to get Jack, it done. Jackie McCray wants to know what time is your last meal of the day? Um, usually I'm not, if I'm doing anything after seven, it's just going to be maybe some juice or a smoothie. But most of the time I'm done. I'm done early, like around six, seven, something like that. I'm not that girl. I just... You know what it is? It's like, I'm not always hungry. I'm not always thinking about food. And I think we're more challenged when we're not being uh, nutritionally uh, served. Um, we're constantly hungry. We're constantly thinking about food. And that is why I got on juicing. That's why juicing, I even took a, a, a class for juicing. So I, I understand the whole thing. And it, it just completely and totally works for me. It wow. does. Wow. Well, I don't even have a primary you. care physician, doctor. I don't, you know? I don't even go to the doctor. Now, Chef, I have a question. Yes. Um, as, as far as your approach when it comes to uh, food preparation, I had someone ask me this question today. Do you uh, take the approach of designing meal plans like people who they want to use food to lose weight or they want to use food for if they're diabetic or have high blood pressure? Do you recommend taking an approach or do you uh, advocate just eating the proper diet and those things will fall in line. You know, I, I've never been one to get on like, you know, little fads and all that kind of stuff. I understand what the human body needs. And so that's, that's the approach. Give us what we need and we will be fine. It's intelligent. It's in, it was created by the intelligence. So it, it will do what you need it to do if you give it the right stuff. And so I'm not batted out. I will make sure that I have the ingredients in the meal that you need. Make sure that I'm not overcooking and killing everything. Make sure that you get enough raw stuff with your meal. And that's kind of how I, 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 I work it. And are you doing any, uh, say, meal preparations for people who are not preparing food at home? Or do you, as, as far as your business, do you get catering uh, requests I, for that? I have, I have one client, one client that I work with right now that I'm doing that for. I've had people like Steve Harvey. I mean, I've had folks before, but mm -hmm. I'm not in the kitchen. And once COVID hit, a lot, we backed up on a lot of things. But I was always available to do that if I if it was needed. Right. Wow. Wow. And then she, uh, I'll personally attest to the fact that uh, she does travel and, and cater parties. <laughs> she yeah, did my daughter's graduation uh, party <laughs> in 2018. Yeah, uh, when, when, when you got another one graduating. Wow. Yeah, 2019. So anyway, so uh, here's a question from Alexi Holford. Uh, do you eat any grains? Yep, I do. I'm what kind of grains do you eat? Wild now, let me rice? tell you, I, I'm in love with farro. Okay. You guys have to farro? 
I we it's not in our restaurant. We don't have it in any of our our, our ingredients. So tell tell us about farro. You like oh, it? It, it tastes good. It is good. such a hearty grain, and it's so wonderful. It's kind of similar to rice, but not you know. But once you cook it, you can just season it up and add it to whatever. Like I make these pot pies. Now they're not your traditional pot pies with the peas and the carrots and all that kind of stuff. I'll get me some jackfruit, some farro, bunch of veggies, uh, uh, red cabbage. I go hard and pack it full of veggies and put that farro in there. And I got people calling me on my personal line out having that pot pie today. <laughs> so, and then another grain that y'all would probably be like, you eat that? I love bulgur. I love bulgur because you can soak it and it's ready to go. You don't even have to put heat to that. Bulgur is just ready to go. Is, that, is bulgur, bulgur gluten-free? Yeah, bulgur wheat. Huh? Is bulgur wheat, is it gluten-free? I don't know. Guess what? I, like I don't know. It. Anybody know? <laughs> I, I, farro, farro should be gluten-free. I'll look it up. Yeah, I think farro is, but I'm not oh, sure yeah. about the bulgur. Bulgur wheat, I'm not sure about that. Chef Babette, are you doing the farro? Um, are you doing the dehydrator or are you? No, I actually, I actually boil it. I okay. Cook. Okay. Yeah, I cook yeah. it. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So you mentioned earlier the whole. It's more than just the food. Take us to the other. We are, we know about the exercise, the meditate. Kind of give us the 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 big picture in terms of all the things. I noticed a lot of your workouts are outdoors. I mean, so you I do love outdoor workouts. They're my favorite. But I'm I'm just gonna I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you all. This is what I say when, I, when I'm speaking to anybody. I don't know of anyone that's running 100. I'm learning and growing and being a, a better me every moment of the day. I have my times when I'm in tears and then, you know, you have to just reel yourself back in and understand, you know, my life has been pretty darn good and I've been pretty blessed. So stay in the now, stay in the moment. I'm constantly speaking to myself to be a better me. When somebody approaches me or they say something to me, they kind of takes me aback a little bit instead of just coming off crazy. I try to take a moment, think about it. Think about what you're going to say. Watch your tone. If you have something you want to type in a comment, put a heart behind it. Lighten up a little bit. No, seriously, because, you know, you get yourself all wound up and, and it's not good for you. On When I get angry and fired up, I feel it. And guess what? I can remember my husband and I going back and forth spatting. I look older after each one of those spats. After each one of those spats, I I'd be like, oh. <laughs> so it's about it's about love. We were created in and of love, and we can't forget that. That's why we have to have love for the animals. We have to have love for our planet. We're one with this whole entire thing. We can't disconnect ourselves from any of it. We are connected. We are all bound together, and so. I, my thing is keep your heart right, work on yourself and stay in the moment. Don't stop living so, you, you, you know, we, we six months, I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay the rent in six months. That's six months. You ain't, you got right now. Is the rent paid? It's paid within, let's, let's live in that for right now. We spend too much time in the past and too much time in the future. And we Amen. don't enjoy our moments. Yeah. And so, wow. Yeah. Wow. I, I like that because, you know, the thing is that we, um, and again, I'm taking it to the clinical arena, but what you're saying is point on in the sense that a lot of people come in, they're very stressed and for the things you're talking about. And oftentimes they're stressed about things they have little to no control over. None. And, and, and also things that probably have little to no impact on their immediate circumstances. And, and I think it's, you know, we talk about the physical food that we bring in that could be harmful or beneficial. And I think what you're alluding to is other types of food, mental and spiritual food, exactly. worry and concern. And, and exactly. you mentioned arguing, all those things you're bringing into your system. And so the body needs to be nourished not only physically, i.e. plant-based foods, but also uh, spiritually and, mm. and 
intellectually and emotionally with the right type of uh, substances for those parts of our body. And we, we often don't think about that and we tend to fester on things and worry about things. So, so our elderly patients, they'll start slow, start with a natural plant-based diet, start to move, start to remove those negative things from your mind. Um, I have some patients, I've, I'm thinking of one patient now, and, you know, we have her on a program, she's getting much better. She comes in and she, you know, she's feeling better, but she just, in her mind, doesn't let herself get better as well. Yeah, okay, I'm sort of better, but I'm not sure. And and I think sometimes we just have to, you know, lift ourselves out of that negative aura that we we maintain and 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 bring ourselves forward. So I like I like the way you express that. Well Doc, you know there's some really awesome um um documentaries out there too and and our elderly people like to sit up in front of the TV instead of them watching MSNBC they can watch some of these videos that that will educate them because you're never too old to learn. Can you, some of these videos are awesome. Are there some good ones you have in mind? Well, one in particular would be uh, um, what the hell? That changed everybody's mind. Remember, you had, oh, yeah. I had so many people coming in the restaurant after what the hell? But I mean, there's a truckload of them. The one Dr. Terry Mason was in. What was that first one he was in? Fork over knives. There you go, that one. There's so many of them out yeah. there now. Yep. He gave us a list of them on yesterday when he was on um, Sunday Bites and Tidbits. Gotcha. And Dr. Yeah. Memory, I was going to say, too, with um, you know feeding our body more um, holistically, sometimes it's just a matter of turning the TV off. I think people don't realize how much negative feed we get from the TV and how stressful it is. She's so I mean, I'm, I'm even at the point now, if I do have the TV on, I, I mute the commercials because the mer commercials are always oh. speaking of um, death and cancers and medicines. And that's a feed, even though you may not be 100% paying attention, you may be in the kitchen somewhere, but that's a feed into your subconscious that, you know, am I, do I have that? Because, you know, they ask, do you have headache? Do you have this? Do you have that? And so, you know, that feeds into your subconscious and that makes you worry. So then when you go to the doctor, you're worried. Do I have do I have this issue? Um, because I see that in the children. Um, they'll ask questions that are totally a child shouldn't even have to be thinking about. But I know it it, um, on the Internet um, or somewhere. Did they pick you up? know, another thing with that, um, I noticed that a lot of the um, um, these ads for medication, um, when they talk about maybe it's an ad for diabetes and they they put this in a person's head. I think this is ridiculous. They'll be like my diabetes, my heart disease, my cancer. Why are you claiming it? It's like <laughs> for me, that stuff isn't there. That's intrusive. You are not. It does not belong to me. And if I if I am suffering with the effects of that, I'm getting rid of that. You got to go. It does not belong to me. And they say it for my diabetes, and my heart disease, and my this and my. I'm like, oh my! I, I don't think that's healthy. I really don't. Yeah. And I don't think doctors should tell people it's yours. No, it's an it's an intruder. You mm -hmm. need to get rid of it. You know, we we're so bad in medicine uh, and in training. We refer to people based on the disease. Oh, the uh, the diabetic over in room such and such. Oh, isn't that evil? The heart failure patient. <laughs> That's so awful. <laughs> we, so it's it's uh it's bad. So we gotta we need a lot of work. Now there's uh, uh Crystal wants to know uh are there any books you recommend? Of course, the one you started off. Any other books you recommend uh, that someone wants? Oh, you to know the China study. You know, all those original books we had, man, and also um, Pathway of Roses. That's a spiritual book, but get that. Get that Pathway book. of Roses? Pathway of Roses. Yeah, that's that's such a, I don't remember the author's name, but it's an excellent uh, a book. It's an excellent book. It just kind of kind of keep you focused, kind of keep you there. But yeah, um, my two in particular, the ones that I read, I have so many books now, Doc, I can't even... And recipe books, I have so many books. I just made it a point to just grab whatever I could grab because really in terms of um, me and recipes, I can look at a picture or just look at the ingredients. You give me the name of the dish, I'm gonna make it my own. I'm not gonna copy your recipe. That recipe is about to be my recipe. 
and the way that I want to do it. So, um, but how do you come up with your recipes? Huh? How do you come up with your recipes? When we create recipes, I'll go online and Google something. We'll modify something else. How do you come up with your recipes? You know, a lot of times, Doc, I love going to places like the farmer's market. I'll even do this in the supermarket. If it's a well-stocked uh, supermarket, mm -hmm. I a lot of times I come up with recipes based on the color of the food I'm about to prep. And now there are times sometimes maybe the color yellow is it. The bell pepper is so gorgeous and the squash is so amazing and everything yellow is coming with me. And I'm getting ready to make up a heck of a dish out of yellow food, yellow veggies. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm going to email you some ingredients I like, and I'm going to ask you to make okay. a dish or whatever. Whatever your governor, whatever, whatever your governor let you guys out of jail out there in California, we'll fly down. <laughs> <laughs> Chef, I'm, I'm just funny. teasing. I'll fly down now. This Chef, is Chef, the, do you do you have a, a book or something on food combining? That's something that I have been trying to get a. A better yeah, grant. you know, it's just the it's just the, the the book Fit for Life by Harvey and Marilyn Diamond. That 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 was okay. just such a, a fantastic read. And and now since it's the world of Google, you know, you can even Google. But I love that book because of the way that Harvey and Marilyn Diamond speaks to you. Mm -hmm. They speak to you like they're talking to just anybody. You don't have to be the, the best the most intellect person to read this book and get it. Okay. Because they're speaking, they're speaking to your common sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're talking to you like, why on earth are you driving your car down the road? And would you ever look at a cow out there grazing and jump out your car with your three-piece suit on and go kneel down and start sucking on this cow's udder? No, you would not. That does not even make sense. Why are you drinking its milk? Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of how they talk to you, okay. you know, in this book. It's a, an amazing book if you've never read it. And then volumes two is telling you all about aluminum in your food and your deodorant. And you, it's giving you the 411 on all that stuff. So when I read those two books, I came up in terms of my knowledge on what I was doing and feeding myself and using on my skin. I had no idea toothpaste with aluminum was not cool or deodorant with aluminum was not. I had no idea. And that is why education is powerful. Mm -hmm. It saves us. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I tell you. And this, uh, let me see if I can get an image of this book uh, so that our people can just take a look at it. Uh, this is Fit for Life. Yeah. Uh, just the image of the book. I typed it in the uh, chat uh, just so people can have that. Uh, and so, uh, well, you know, Chef Babette, this has been wonderful. Um, are we done? We are, we are almost oh, done. What I like you to do, <laughs> we, I mean, it's, it's time flies when you're having fun, but yes. leave us with some words of wisdom. I mean, again, we want to, we want to try to, and, and while Chef Babette uh, leaves us with the words of wisdom, I want everybody to give her a digital round of applause. I really appreciate oh, this in the magnifying show. Uh, uh, an, an outstanding show, but w give us some final parting words of wisdom. What what should we, you know, again, as we get older, what what have you found? Well, you've given us so much, but give us some well, you know final what? take home message. This, this is what I believe is is extremely important for all of us is to put yourself in the number one position. Um, you're first. Take care of you. Take care of you. There is a reason that you exist on this planet today. And, and there is nobody more important than yourself. And remember, we are one in this. We are all connected. You can't separate. You. I don't care what color you are. I don't care if you are wrapped, if, if you are wrapped in energy. We, we are all one. So let's treat each other in a better and then treat yourself even better and really that's it wonderful wonderful well thank you very much guys thank you very much for round of applause we go digital we go manual and uh i'm gonna see you guys backstage as you close out this has uh been uh another wonderful show guys and i really appreciate those you came in uh the audience and uh if you're uh, gonna be looking at some uh as a recording 
Uh, I really want you to pay close attention to some of the insights that Chef Babette gave us. Uh, really, it's all about the quality of life. And, you know, we, we talk about natural living and, and all of the things we talk about on the show, whether you're filtering water or eating plant-based or getting out of the sun. And, and many things seems like is an imposition on your life. We have a set lifestyle and we go to work and come home and we do certain things. And, and we talk about this lifestyle modification uh, approach and we get into the science and so on. Sometimes you get lost into the, in the details. And it's really important that you understand that there's a purpose behind this. And, and the beautiful part about this show, the beautiful part about bringing Chef and Bet on is that she gives us the understanding of what's the per, what's the end game, what's the, 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 the gain behind all the things we talk about on this show and other shows uh, in terms of improving your quality of life. And it's an investment, it's an investment in ourselves. So if you take the extra time to prepare your food, take the extra time to avoid bad things, take the extra time to, to meditate and exercise, all of these things are investment in you. And that's your number one earthly commodity, your car, your shoes, your house, all these other things are secondary to your physical self. So we hope that you learned a lot tonight. I certainly did. And uh, again, we uh, really appreciate you coming on. And until next show, we want you to keep it fresh, natural, and live. Thanks for joining us.